I'm Claudia Catania, and you're listening to Playing On Air. You are about to hear Two Crows Apart, written and directed by Max Baker, whose full-length plays include The Conspiracists and Live from the Surface of the Moon. His cast includes Kieran Hines, a major Irish film, television, and stage actor. Joining him is Geraldine Hughes, a multiple award winner for her solo play Belfast Blues, which she also wrote. We'll talk with Max Baker and his cast right after they record. And now, Two Crows Apart. We are in the living room of a 90s-built suburban house on the edge of Williston, Vermont, about eight miles south of Burlington, three miles from the airport. It overlooks a well-kept lawn. It is an early March morning. Allison is on the sofa in pajamas. Sam strolls in from the kitchen in a robe and slippers with a mug of coffee. There you are. Here I am. No sign of you in bed. Couldn't sleep. Couldn't think where you'd got to. You made coffee? You won't like it. Did you make it too strong? Probably. If you make it too strong, it becomes bitter. I don't know how to make coffee. But it's just grounds and water, honey. That's all. Grounds and water. (sighs) Told you. Yeah, it's not terrible. I'm not looking forward to today, I'll tell you that. Wow. Have you seen this? All these crows out here on the lawn? Look, a bunch of them. A flock. Uh, what do you call them? It's, no, it's not a flock. It's, a, it's um, what is it? A gang? A rack? No, it's weirder than that. Uh, the library, Congress, uh, river, um, impediment, an impediment of crows, something like that, huh? What? A doppelganger. Is that it? A doppelganger. What are they called? Who? A collection of crows, like a fowl or a chest or a curtain or a nightmare, something, something of crows. Murder. Murder, that's it. A murder of crows. I'm telling you, Alzheimer's. Gosh, there's got to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, twelve, fifteen, twenty of them right there on the lawn. And, and look, look, more over there by the sumac. Look. I'm sorry, would you mind not talking so much right now? Yeah, but we've got a murder of crows in our garden, honey. I have honey. a desperate headache. Do you? Yes. I had zero awareness of you coming home last night. I slept on the couch. You think it's an omen? So many crows? What was it I was watching the other day about how intelligent they are? I mean, we know they're intelligent, but how intelligent they really are. And it was one of those uh, YouTube things, you know, Remarkable World of Birds or something. And crows apparently not only know who they are when they see themselves in a mirror to the point of preening or playing pranks on each other, they can actually identify and remember human faces. They know who we are individually at a distance coming and going. That's some ability. I defy any of us to be able to tell two crows apart, this many of them, this far away. Maybe, uh, maybe, uh, 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 what are they called? Not orthodontists, that's teeth. Honey, honey, the, the bird study people, equivalent of a dentist, experts, but for birds. What are you talking about? Which I, I'm contemplating how singular the human life experience is and how we readily assume it isn't. I really can't handle a conversation about the human life experience right now, Sam. All right, fine. Well, shut up. Ornithologist. <laughs> That's it. I swear, if I end up not knowing who I am, or no, 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 that wouldn't be so terrible, who you are. If I end up not knowing who you are, Shoot me in the head, will you? Okay. Ornithologist. Even so, let's say they were to all fly away, and some of them come back later, at a later date. There's no way you'd be able to tell which ones they were from this far away by looking. Sam. What? Please. Oh, right. Sorry. Yes. Uh, Sorry. So... I take it you had fun with Liz last night? I did, actually. Still hunting for Mr. Liz? Not anymore. 
She found somewhere? She's off men. Oh, well, there's news. She's got other priorities right now. Curing cancer? Climbing the Himalayas? New shoes? What's the matter with you? Nothing. I'm anxious. Oh, keeps falling apart. What are you doing over there? I'm rolling a joint. Trying to roll a joint. What, you're going to get high now? I've got a headache. But it, it's 8.30 in the morning. It's medicinal. But they're going to be here in no time. The plane lands at 9.50. They're walking through that door by 10.20. Then we have an hour tops before heading to the service. I know. Yeah, well, we have to get changed. Pick up the flowers. I know. We all know what the schedule is, Sam. But I still can't fathom why he insisted on staying with us for the duration. You invited him. Oh, he invited himself. Could have said no. No, no, no. You're not allowed to say no to anyone anymore. You have to be open and accepting and understanding about everything all the time. Yeah, you don't want that. Where's the lighter? What? Lighter. A uh, candle drawer. What I don't understand is why I'm getting dragged along into this thing. But you can't stay here by yourself. She wasn't my professor. I can't help that. The fact is, John and Betsy Mc... Mc Cowley, whatever they're calling themselves these days, are coming here and staying with us, and we're all going together. That's what's happening. I hate funerals. They're so funereal. I'm telling you, the word no is being slowly eradicated from the English language. Fifty years from now, no won't exist. And when no doesn't exist, forget it. All your desire for acceptancy and positivity will go straight out the window, because without no, yes means nothing. Fifty years from now, we'll all be speaking Chinese. Fifty years from now, we'll both be dead. Oh, well, that's cheering me up. At least you won't have to go to any more funerals. <sighs> La Quinta Suites have got some nice rooms. The courtyard, the Anchorage Inn has a heated pool, for God's sake. They want to fly all the way to Vermont and spend three days at the Anchorage Inn by the airport, Sam. No, they want to intrude on us. He's your friend. We went to college together. He came to our wedding, we went to his. That's the extent of it. You remember their wedding? Vividly. So that binds us to a lifetime of hosting duties? One of the perks of getting married is being able to cull the people from your life you don't want to have around anymore. Well, if you think of any others, let me know. I, you know what I mean. Why does everything have to be turned into an event these days? Birthdays, anniversaries, engagement parties, baby showers, moving. These things aren't unique. They happen all the time. But everyone wants to gin them up as being extraordinary. Not to mention our perennial obligations to the high holy days of American culture. Grilling hot dogs, stuffing turkeys, setting off fireworks, handing out candy on what would otherwise be perfectly exciting, random, unpredictable days in our precious little lives. We are forced to participate in preset rituals of behavior. Super Bowl Sunday, Valentine's Day. Cancer Awareness Month, Casual Fridays, Throwback Thursdays. We're drowning in the momentous. Aren't there any non-occasion days anymore? How ironic would that be? Have a non-occasion day once a year. Death is an occasion, Sam. It's one of the two occasions, birth and death. That's it. And birth, you don't know what's happening. Death, boy, you know that's coming. You spend your whole life knowing it's coming. So when it comes, yes, that's an occasion. Well, when mine comes, don't let out of town guests railroad you into providing free food and lodging. Ow! What is it? I burnt my thumb. Clean sheets, towels, conversation. I mean, what exactly are we going to do with them for 68 hours? We could show them where Ben was born. That'll take 12 minutes. Then we can drive a couple of blocks and show them where Jerry was born. I'm trying to simplify my life here. That's why we moved to Williston, isn't it? Why I took early retirement, so I wouldn't be subject to other people's demands all the time. I'm going to make some coffee. Why did you say it like that? What? I suppose you had fun last night with Liz. You said... So, I suppose you had fun last night with Liz. Like, I'm not allowed to have fun anymore? I didn't say it like, like that. Like, you're threatened if I have fun with someone other than you? What, you're being crazy, Alice? As if we spend hours and hours together rolling about on the rug in ecstatic joy. I'm not being crazy, Allison. I'm being, that's what it feels like to be me, Allison. 
Yeah, well, what it feels like to be me, Alison, and the cold, hard reality of what is doesn't always live in the same silo. At least I leave the house once in a while instead of pacing around all day from the living room to the kitchen to the garage to the living room to the garage to the kitchen. But I'm pottering. Reorganizing everything ad infinitum. I'm retired. When you're retired, you're allowed to potter. And I do leave the house plenty. Thank you. Shopping. Shopping counts. If it weren't for me, you wouldn't know where anything was. We'd be living in chaos. See, your logic is if I'm not having a good time with someone else, there must be something wrong with us. Maybe we're heading for a divorce or something, only she won't tell me. You want a divorce? No. You think I want a divorce? Why do I think that? That's what I'm asking you. I don't understand the first thing about this conversation, and uh, quite frankly, I've got other things to worry about other than getting divorced right now. I'm making coffee. Do we have any aspirin? Yes. Bring me some, would you? Oh, wow. They're flying away, look. Hun. All of them taken off. Holy cow! You hear that? Must be 50 of them at least. Wow. Now, that's freedom. That's... If I could choose how I want to come back, I'll take Crow. You know they don't have penises. What? Birds, most birds, males, don't have penises. Or balls. What, this is what you know about birds? I guess so. How do they, uh... They just have a hole in the back that sort of does everything. Huh, well, if the males don't have penises, there's even less way of telling one from another. Depends what you're looking for. They're gone, just like that. Can you light some incense? For why? So our home doesn't smell like an opium den when the Magolis arrive. Yeah, I really need some aspirin. I'm getting it. Sorry about the coffee. Balance. That's all, honey. Balance. Balance is the whole key. I'll try to remember that. I love you. And I you. You do? Yes. Good. Good. Then let's try and muddle through this thing, shall we? You just heard Two Crows Apart, written and directed by Max Baker. It featured Kieran Hines as Sam and Geraldine Hughes as Allison. Max Baker, playwright. Claudia. Claudia. Max. <laughs> In your play, yes. we just heard. Lovely. It was lovely. <laughs> Did you search for a metaphor for feelings of impending doom and then come upon crows, or did crows come first? I don't think I search for metaphors, ever. I think they are, everything is a metaphor. So you can, they exist if you want them. Crows, I don't know where crows came from. I don't know at all where that, where the imagery of 50 crows on a lawn mm -hmm. came from. There was a picture in your head? I used a picture in my a head. Picture in, yeah. Okay, so you saw so just uh, a, an image. Yeah, there was uh, an image okay. of this. And then, you know, usually <clears throat> these characters start living. So they just come, they're the ones that dictate what they see. My role really is to sort of get out of their way and they let me know if I hmm. interfere. But the, the function of the brain as an organ generates thoughts. That's what it does, the way you know our hearts beat and our livers process alcohol. And um, the brain produces thoughts, so it's just working, it's just doing what it does. It's a funny thing, isn't it? Uh, writing is a funny thing. Where do, where, does, where do any thoughts come from? Who is doing the thinking? Mm-hmm. There's another play. I was just going to say. <laughs> mm. A murder of crows, though. That's an actual true usage, Max mm -hmm. and Kieran. Do you think, in addition to Sam being upset about guests coming and Allison sleeping on the couch, how much is he also upset about a general foreboding? 
Would well, you that, say? I suppose that's in the story that we've just read, and uh, but it's also the fact that I, I think um, Max has created this person who's also very interested in in knowledge and uh, learning things and watching things and being amazed still by creation or whatever that is that all that possibly could go on and all the the fact that he then introduces something that I have no idea about the, the fact that these birds can recognize people whether that's true or not you didn't <laughs> watch the YouTube video <laughs> I personally didn't watch <laughs> the YouTube yeah. but um, it's fascinating that this can yeah. uh, that people can observe and learn from just yes. simple facts like that right I think yes I think Sam's the character of Sam is questioning very much Oh, why do we assume that the human experience of life is the prime? Is, is right. Yeah. Is it all life has an experience of life, and it's all equal? That's why you write how singular the human life experience is, and how readily we assume it isn't. It, it isn't. isn't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's where Sam. That's in his early retirement. That's his first thought. Right, that's where where he's coming to in his thinking after he's retired. Now that he has time to think. Now that he has Apart time to from think. Apart the profession and all that. Right, exactly. Now he's not putting beautifully designed pencil holders on a desk. The, what is the value to that? Contemplating the world at large, probably yeah. on a bigger scale. Yeah. So oh. is he contemplating then that he is very alone in a way that animals are not? I mean, is there a collection of human beings? Are there any words for those? A rabble, those? I think it's called. Is a it? Is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly, the people I hang out with, they call it rabble. I think it's called New York City. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, I think, well, I think maybe he's, he's relating to the animal part of himself. Like, we recognizing, oh, I'm just an organism, so I will die, as all organisms do. What is this experience while I'm alive? And I suppose it's the idea is like, and is there anything but you need to share? Yeah. I mean, the old idea to be alone mm. in that yeah. is kind of horrible. And even these crows that you don't know, they seem connected in some way. And the, that whole idea of his slight paranoia yeah. about Alison mm. maybe being younger and maybe thinking of other things to hang on to somebody who he seems to me, from what you've written, genuinely not needs, but kind of loves. Yeah. I think this play is about love. Yeah, it's about contemplating life. I don't know. And, you know, I will say something. In the Irish culture, and I don't know, well, certainly in my house anyway, but we were told about birds. It was a weird thing. And actually, there's a big thing about fear also in in this play. And I guess I was saying to Max when I read it, like, how terrifying c- birds are to me and crows and so in Ireland they say if a bird gets into your house you know one bird flies into your house it's a, it's a message that someone's going to die so it's it's it's, it's actually terrifying the play really f- when you when I think about it yeah absolutely but I think Alison is also at this point she death is some, she doesn't like funerals death is something Don't that is think separate about it. from her whereas I think Sam is recognizing Death is part of the process, yeah. yeah. And uh, and Alison does not want Sam to die either. No. You know, so that's why I would go back to the love thing. Like, it's, you know, it's scary for her, you know. I don't want, mm-hmm. I want this to go away. Mm-hmm. I don't want to go to anybody else's funeral because it's too scary. I love the part where Max says there's no yes without a no. <laughs> you know, it's... Um, <laughs> But you can say no. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you Otherwise, know. you're yeah. frowned upon. That's right. Yes. Be po- everything is true, what you're yes. writing. Be positive with everybody. That's right. So yes. You can't actually tell the truth and say, yeah. that's kind of wrong. And it's all yeah. about being correct and not, not crossing the line and not offending somebody. Right. That's yes, right. Okay. no is right. okay. You don't owe no. anybody the story behind the no. No, I can't. I'm sorry. But now, Dan, Why? I you, just can't. But now, you are, you are a hater. Oh, if you that's say no, the word. A you hater. are considered a hater. Mm. Is that a, an, an Americanism? Yeah. No. A hater. Okay. Sort of becoming yeah, no. now that sort of. If you, He's a mm-hmm. hater. Yeah, if you're a, you're a hater to, if you've got a, if you've, if Kieran, you've written a play and I say I'm not going to produce it, I'm going to be a hater. Oh. You're going to be termed as a hater. I am a hater. Wow. For not producing not just play. someone who declined to right. help join the play. Yeah. Which is the truth of it. Yeah. Right. He just said wow. no. But I, but 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 the the point of this that that Sam makes is, 
with, without no, yes has Doesn't no exist. meaning. Mm. Exactly. And then you say we, in the future it yeah, won't exist. Right. And if we get rid of no, then we are just... It's one slippery slope. Yeah. <laughs> I hope to greet you all again. It's been a great honor having you. Thank you. Again, Max Baker. Hello. Hello. <laughs> oh. You greeted me again. <laughs> Once again. <laughs> My honor. <laughs> Geraldine Hughes and Kieran Hines. Thanks so much. Thanks, Thank you. Julia. Thank you very much. You've been listening to Playing On Air. Theme and play music by Tom Cochan. Recording by John Kilgore and M.P. Kuo. Sound design and mastering by Tim Phillips. Sasha Spitzer, assistant producer, literary and development associate Lucy Fleming. We invite you to visit our website at playingonair.org, find us on Facebook or Twitter, and to subscribe to our podcast on iTunes. While you're there, leave us a review. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for listening. I'm series producer Claudia Catania. Distributed by PRX.